Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about what happens when you have inverse variation, but uh, one or more of the variables has an exponent in it. We call that powers in inverse variation. So let's get started. Sometimes there are powers of variables and those are inversely proportional. Um, so x could be raised to an exponent, y could be raised to a different exponent, and when you multiply those you always get the same constant k. And we call that k our constant of proportionality. So let's say, for example, we had a cylinder with a fixed volume of 200. Then I know that 200 would equal the formula for the volume of a cylinder, which is pi times the radius squared times the height of the cylinder. Um, I can divide both sides by pi and I would get that h times r squared would equal 200 over pi. And since h is a variable and r is a variable that is being squared, and because I am multiplying those two things together and getting the same constant, 200 over pi, then I know that h and r squared are inversely proportional. So here's an example. Let's suppose that y is um, inversely proportional to x squared. And that's how I would write it. That's the notation I would use. What's going to happen to y if x gets tripled? And what's going to happen to x if y gets multiplied by 4? So if y is indeed proportional to 1 over x squared, meaning it's inversely proportional to x squared, then I can write that x1 squared times y1 is going to equal x2 squared times y2. So I'm just rewriting that there in pink so that I can answer the pink question. So if x is being tripled, then I can replace x2 with 3 times x1. And that all gets squared, so when I simplify those parentheses, 3x1 all squared is going to be 9x1 squared. All right, and now I need to solve this equation. So I can uh, divide out the x1 squareds on each side. And so I get that y1 equals 9 times y2. Um, if I divide both sides by 9, I get that 1 9th y1 equals y2. So what that means is if x is tripled, then in order to get my second y, I would have to take my first y and divide it by 9. All right, so that's what that means. y is going to be multiplied by 1 9th or divided by 9. All right, to answer the blue question, what's going to happen to x if y is multiplied by 4? So what that means is my second y is going to be 4 times my first y. So let me make that replacement. Um, I don't really need to uh, expand any parentheses, uh, but I can divide out the y1s on each side. So I get that x1 squared is going to equal 4 times x2 squared. If I square root both sides, I get that x1 would equal 2 times x2. And then solving for x2, x2 would equal 1 half times x1. So what that means is, if y is multiplied by 4 to get from my first y to my second y, then to get from my first x to my second x, I would have to take that first x and multiply it by a half, or divide it by 2 in order to get my second x. So if y is multiplied by 4, then x is what we would call halved. All right, and again, just like with the other types of variation, we can find missing values if I know uh, one of the pairs and I know one of the values of a second pair, I can find the missing value. So if y is inversely proportional to x cubed and I know that y is 9 when x is equal to 2, what is the value of y when x is equal to 4? So since y is inversely proportional to x cubed, then I can multiply x cubed times y um, on each side and I can set up my equation that way. So x1 cubed times y1 is going to equal x2 cubed times y2. And now I will plug in the information that I know. The first x was 2, the first y was 9, and the second x was 4. I just need to figure out what the second y was. So 72 is going to equal 64y if I simplify everything. And then dividing by 64 on both sides gives me y equals 1.125. All right, the next part is if y is inversely proportional to x squared and y is 5 when x is 4, then what is x going to equal when y is 45? 
So I set up the equation pretty much the same way, but now it's x1 squared times y1 is going to equal x2 squared times y2. I plug in what I know. The first x was 4, the first y was 5, and the second y was 45. I need to figure out what that second x is. So if I simplify both sides, I get that 80 equals uh, 45 times x squared. That means that x squared will equal 16 over 9. And if I square root both sides, I will get that x equals 4 thirds. All right, so that is a discussion about using powers with inverse variation. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will see you tomorrow.